Man, this fucked up if this true. Lots of motherfuckers said this is proof that Fulio got backdoored. As y'all can see, this young and ace with his homie. And that's the same motherfucker that's hanging out with Fulio as well at the top. Now, I don't know about Florida beef, but I do know that Fulio and Young and Nace got a lot of beef with each other. So, he should ever be in the same picture with motherfucking Fulio and this motherfucker that's cool with Young and Nace. But I don't think Fulio got backdoor because he literally made a post a week before his passing that he gonna be having a pool party. If you read the comments, everybody predicted that something was gonna happen to Fulio because he did this shit. One motherfucker said, R.P. Julio Fulio, and they said, don't show up if you like living. And then another motherfucker commented, bro, how y'all predict this? But it's common sense. Motherfuckers in the comments literally said, drop it your load week before them boys finna spin your shit and you drop the time. I ain't gonna cap. Fulio should have listened to the comments because his ass do too much dissing and shit to be dropping his location. I guess Fulio ain't give a fuck because the night of the party, he was literally recording everything that they was doing. And my cousin from Florida said anyone from Tampa could easily find out where he at just looking at this video. But if you're trying to make bread without working a job, check out the bio and you can run a moolah through your phone. But I don't think he got back door just because Fulio was dropping his location everywhere. But in one of Fulio's songs, he did say he felt like he had a snake messing around with ATK. It's so much fake love once a motherfucker pass away. They said, hey there, love it. That ninja Fulio a legend. I didn't never hear nobody talk about playing no Fulio or he a legend, none of that shit. The most I heard about Fulio is when he dropped that When I See You and this incident of him passing away. But then at the same time, everybody do know about Fulio. Fulio is a legend in his own way. Like, when it come to dissing in Florida, he most definitely a legend for sure. But the fake love is crazy. Fulio gained nearly 200,000 followers on Instagram and millions of views on his YouTube 24 hours after passing away. As y'all can see, he had 1.1 million. Now, I can understand why motherfuckers go check out his music. Lots of motherfuckers probably didn't know who Fulio was, so they wanted to find out who he was and they listened to his music and shit. But following his Instagram after he passed away is some crazy ass shit to me. Like, he's gone. He's not gonna be posting no more, gang. There's no point in y'all following him. Now, checking out his page is a different story, but what's the point of y'all following him? I feel if you wasn't following a person when they was living, it's no point of following them once they passed away. I'm not even surprised. I think Fulio might become the most diss Florida rapper. They might diss him more than Bibby. I ain't gonna lie to you. Young and Ace literally made a song less than 24 hours after he passed away. Then Jada Young and Affiliate 23KB post a picture in front of the Holiday Inn that Fulio got unalive. But this just the beginning. I know motherfuckers probably making disses as we speak right now. They thinking of ways to diss Fulio. But you can't even be mad at him, though, because Fulio would have did the same shit if one of his ops passed away. Honestly, Fulio probably would have dissed him in a way worse way if you ask me. What the fuck? Why the fuck is a 15-year-old even living with a motherfucking 21-year-old? And the parents knew about this shit. This is the crazy part. The parents allowed the 15-year-old in 8th grade to live with a motherfucking 21-year-old. And guess what? The 15-year-old girl was shot and unalive by her 21-year-old boyfriend the night before her 8th grade graduation. And motherfuckers knew that they was in a toxic relationship. They said this man literally put his hands on her and threatened her multiple times. And they still allowed this child to be inside this relationship with this grown-ass man. Like, this shit just is crazy as hell to me. It's fucked up she didn't even get to attend her graduation. So basically, her parents was wondering why the fuck she ain't attend her graduation. So they end up going to her house, which I don't understand why they let a teenage girl live with a grown motherfucker and have their own house together. But they end up going to the crib, and that's when they found her laying down the floor with a bullet wound. But they should never let him out of jail, because first off, he shouldn't have ever been talking to a 15-year-old when he's 21. I don't even know how he's even comfortable doing some shit like that. And then you took her life, and then you was threatening her and beating on her. Like, bro, this is a little girl, bro. Go mess with someone your age. Well, actually, it's not good to even mess with no females your age, but I would prefer that than messing up a 15-year-old that's not an adult. White people shit. That's all I can say. A 15-year-old girl tried to stab her sleeping mother to unalive her because she believed she was suppressing her black in her. Now, I don't know what the fuck she mean by the black in her. Like, her being an African-American or her emo-ness. Because she looked like a motherfucking emo. I ain't gonna cap to you. Like, we need more information on this shit. And she literally admitted that she planned to unalive her mother because she's a weird bee. 
But I'm trying to figure out what do suppressing the black in her mean? Like the emo, the evil. Like she don't look like the type of motherfucker that I even want to be like a black girl. So I'm assuming she talking about black as an emo, the dark side of her. I don't know. I don't think this some motherfucking Wo Vicky type of shit. Cause ain't Wo Vicky the motherfucker that said she was white, but she was black. Some shit like that. I don't think this the type of situation she mean by being black. I don't know. We got some more white people shit. A 14-year-old boy was arrested for actually battering a 91-year-old woman. Why a 91-year-old woman? Like, why would you even want to do something with a woman that old? Like, he got some weird shit going on. And it looked like by his mugshot, he don't give no fucks at all. He'll literally go do that shit again. On June 9, 2024, around midnight, near the town of Reddick, a 91-year-old victim was awakened to find a person sneaking into her home in a cruel act of violence. She was literally beat up and actually battered by the suspect. And they end up doing a DNA test, so they know for a fact it was him that motherfucking did that shit. There ain't no way to lie out this shit. This why I ain't fighting nobody. Motherfuckers be saying, oh, you scary for shooting someone in the streets. Yo ass is just a goofy if you don't shoot someone in the streets. Two people has been arrested for attacking a 17-year-old girl with acid late last month. As y'all can see, her face is destroyed. I ain't gonna lie to you. They fucked up. This how she was looking, and this how she looking currently after the motherfucking acid. Now, they said she gonna be out the hospital real soon, but her face ain't gonna never be able to be the same. This is why I say you shouldn't fight in the streets because you never know what the fuck going to happen to you. You feel me? You could be the best fighter in the world. But if you win in the fight, guess what? They going to end up getting a knife or a gun or they might call for backup. And then what you going to do? Motherfuckers is not Batman. So it's not no point of trying to fight motherfuckers not knowing the consequences of you winning the fight. So before y'all talk about someone that popped someone in the street fight, just remember what happened to this girl right here. I promise you. If she would have ended up up and pipe and popping them, she wouldn't have never got acid poured on her face. But I'm not blaming her for this situation because she's a 17-year-old girl. She's not even allowed to have a gun. And it's no reason why they even pour acid on her. Like, where the fuck they even get that shit from? But I'm making this video for awareness. Don't fight nobody in the streets. I don't care how good you think you can fight. I don't care how much you're trying to prove a point. Don't fight nobody in the streets. I ain't going to lie to you. The only time you should be fighting someone is if it's inside a controlled environment. And no street fight is considered a controlled environment because you never know what the fuck could happen in a street fight. R.P. Lil, bro, this shit hit home because I literally grew up inside an abusive household and I literally seen my mama get beat on and I literally tried to stop it and then motherfuckers tried to get on my ass for trying to stop it. So I understand what Lil Bro was doing in this situation. And looking at this situation, I just got lucky because I could have ended up getting shot just like Lil Bro did. But an eight-year-old boy was shot and unalive while trying to protect his mother from his abusive father. So basically how the situation went down was the father was already locked up for being an abusive person. He ended up getting out on bail. He ended up going to the family home. They ended up getting to an altercation or whatever. He had a gun. The son ended up trying to grab the gun and shit to make sure he didn't try to shoot his mama. And in the process, the father ended up shooting the kid and the kid ended up losing his life. And the mama tried to get the son not to intervene, but he wasn't going for any of that shit. The son felt he had to protect his mama, so he did what he had to do. But I feel like the kids shouldn't even have to go through this shit. Like, if you a goofy-ass parent that's inside a toxic gas relationship with your significant other, you should not have no kid at all because you're putting your kids in situations like this. 